Peace. I'm your brother Crumb, and you are now watching Crumb TV. You are now watching Crumb TV. You are watching Crumb TV. This is Prema Asset in Los Angeles, Lemur Park, and you are now watching Crumb TV. You are watching Crumb TV. We are watching Crumb TV. You are now watching Crumb TV. So subscribe. Look. I am the Grand Sheikis uh, Unity Temple Number 80 More Science Temple of America, and you are watching Crumb TV. Yo, this is that K179. You are now watching Crumb TV. Crumb. TV. You already know what it is, family. You are now watching Crumb TV. I am your humble brother, Crumb, here for another installation of Crumb TV. This video was called Medieval Witchcraft. That's right, family. So let me just uh, start this with a little ritual. Y'all know how I like to do, especially in honor of witchcraft. If you could, repeat after me. Peace. Ashe. Islam. Namaste. Hotel. Grand Rising, Assalamu Alaikum, Walaikum Salam, Boom Dia, Oseo, Halito, Wagwan, What Happened, whatever the greeting is in your respective language, I am your humble brother, Crumb, here for another installation of Crumb TV. So with that said, family, I got a good one today, but before I get into it, let me put some respect on a family's name. It's all about acknowledgement. I, I mean, I like to just, you know, put it out there for the people. Uh, number one in the building of the first responders is Frank White, 32nd. He's a usual suspect. We're going to have to brand the whole damn thing. The usual suspects are the people who are usually, why is this? This is not even on the right side. Get over there. It's just, it was in the way. Um, are usually in the building. Shout out to Frank White. I see you. I always appreciate you, big bro. It is my elder, my baba, my big brother, big homie, true king. He says, peace, family. We say in peace back. I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Number three in the building. This is the perfect trifecta. trifecta. Mir Ami R says, peace and love, brother Crumb. Oh, this is Ra L. Sankofa checking in out there in Alabama. Shout out to him in Alibaba. We see you. We love you. We appreciate you. With that said, family, just want to throw a couple of things out there before we get started, like we really get started. Um, you know, I try to do all my promo in the first five minutes. So I'm going to be uh, doing an event in Boston. Uh, they don't call it Boston in Boston. In Boston, they call it the Bean. So when in Rome, do as the Romans. I will be in the bean for the Stonehead history, my Stonehead history lecture, uh, July 25th. It's a free event. So come one, come all. You can uh, RSVP with me on crumbtv.info forward slash events, or you can just come out there. Um, it's a black museum. And this head right here, that head, that's where I'm going to be at. I'm going to be beside the big head. Like, Crumb, where are you going to be at? I'm going to be right over there by that big-ass head. It's a big head. I'm going to be over there by that. We're going to be doing some measures. They're going to have uh, free – I'm not saying free food. It'll be definitely vendors, uh, a free uh, tour of the city, the black side, Roxbury, stuff like that. Uh, lots of information, lots of good people. I'm going to be there. Uh, a lot more people are going to be there. I'm not going to say no names just in case they don't come, but you can definitely go and check crumbtv.info forward slash events out to go over there to get that. Uh, in addition to that, you already know what it is, family. Uh, the only way I can even do the things I do is because of the people that support me. Um, without their support, I would not be here. How did you get here? That's right. That's right. You want to know how I got here? By way of Latanya Page Balkum. She uh, is actually bringing this video and everything this month to you. So you can go to my 42 plusgodcom to check her out. She is my uh, sponsor. So shout out to her, my 42 plus God. So with that said, family, that is pretty much all I had. I have a uh, PowerPoint that I wanted to go over with the family lamb. But uh, they taking long, long. So I'm gonna go ahead on and get started. How I get started. Uh, so uh, this video was supposed to be with um, Keenan Booker, the God 720 kicked out of heaven. He is the one who created this PowerPoint. Uh, but he is uh, 
late, even though everybody else is on time, but we still love him. So uh, he wanted to talk about witchcraft. He already had a PowerPoint. So I'm going to jump right into it. I wanted to take my position as pro witchcraft. I think he was going to take a position of anti witchcraft. Uh, so just to put this out there, I do believe in witchcraft. I do love witchcraft. I do appreciate witchcraft. I understand the power of witchcraft. And we are currently under a spell right now. Oh, Latanya Page, welcome in this, Jane. Hey, okay, so she's in here, family. She in here, in here. I didn't even know that. So uh, yeah, shout out to her. Uh, but no, um, uh, getting back to it. So let's just get right into it. Folklore. The Wild Hunt. Uh, come on, I'm messing up already. The wild hunt was a procession of spirits or ghosts who roamed through the countryside re reveling and destroying. The leader of this ghastly route was sometimes female, sometimes male. The female leader was in northern Germany called Holda, Holy, or Holt. The friendly one, wife of Woden. Woden is Odin. Odin is the, is the father of Thor. Goddess of marriage and... Fuginid, Fugun, I'm going to challenge him on this one. I'm going to copy this one. I'm not sure if that's a typo or not. Maybe it's just a word I don't know. Very possible. Fecundity. Fecundity. Okay, it is a word. The ability to produce an abundance of offspring or new growth. Fecundity. I'm going to have to share a screen on that one, folks. Uh, I am a nerd. Uh, I am channeling at this time my inner nerd, and I am projecting the spell upon you. So anybody who uh, is into words, who's into spells, you're going to learn a day. So uh, the ability to, to produce an abundance of offspring. Fecundity. Fecundity. I'm with it all day, family. All right, so let's get back to the uh, PowerPoint. Bear with me. My apologies. I'm about to call Keenan because I don't know what the F he at. Uh, anyway, uh, the female leader was a northern uh, a German called Holda, Holy or Holt, meaning the friendly wife, uh, the, the friendly one, wife of woe and goddess of marriage and fecundity. In the south, she was called uh, Percha, Bertha or Berta, the bright one. This goddess was associated through the hunt, the moon and the night with Diana. The association was probably made in the minds of scholars and churchmen who applied the familiar classical name Diana to the unfamiliar goddess of the Teutons. Now, when we, when you, I know, I do know this word. Anytime you're dealing with the word Teuton, that's Nordic mythology. Uh, Thor, Odin, Frigga, Twi, Loki, that's all Teutic or uh, uh, Nordic. And even more curious connection was made between Berta and Holda and Herodias the murderous wife of Herod. The dark reputation of Herodias and the and the her element in her name, I'm sorry, I just realized what they're trying to say. The dark reputation of Herodia and the her element in her name seem to have caused the association. When the leader of the wild hunt was male, his name began with Burr or her. Berthold, her lechen, her knee. Also, I want to uh, also mention, I don't know if anybody's reading my mind right now. I was also thinking about Hercules. Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, brother, hopefully you're ready. I'm going to bring you on. As you can see, we started. No, don't look like he's ready. I'm going to keep going. Relating to him to brightness and the cult of the moon. The members of the wild hunt roamed the wilderness with the heaves. Heath being short for heathens and the force. They were akin to the wild men and women who part human, part animal and part spirit were believed to roam the medieval forces. Elements of the wild woman often perceived as murderous, child eater and bloodsucker lingered in the folklore and the folk tales of the lonely witch who dealt in the forest, who dwelt in the forest. Gradually in the early middle ages, the characteristics of the wild huntress and wild women were transferred to witches. Wow, what a way to start the day. What a way to start the day. Okay, with that said, the brother is in the building. Good brother, we've already started, but if I could, could I get you to tell them who you are and where they can find you? My name is Keenan Booker, okay, also known as the God 720. And I'm 
composed the PowerPoint the Brother Crumb is using today. Um, we're here to talk about medieval witchcraft, and I've uh, compiled an authored said subject in the Kicked Out of Heaven series that you can find at my site, kickedoutofheaven.com. Kenan Booker, if you decide to purchase through Amazon, I do request that you purchase from Stargate Publishing, which is also me. You can go to stargatepublishing.com and also find the same material, okay? So that's uh, with that being stated, we can continue on with the, <laughs> with the presentation that you got going here. Um, we were in the folklore uh, section, am I correct? I can't hear you. Sorry about that. Yeah, that was slide one. We uh, started with folklore. Um, and uh, just to you know, give you another plug and the family as well, well, give the family another plug. This is all coming out of the book, Kicked Out of Heaven, the untold history of the white races from circa 700 to 1700 AD, volume two. There's a volume one and a volume three, as you can imagine, by Kenan Booker. So with that said, we kind of got an idea um, initially through folklore. Um, do you want to read the next one or should I? Um, yeah, we can read it. I do want to say this real quick so that people could get it very clear. This book, volume two, was published on March 31st, 2017. And Nipsey Hussle was murdered on March 31st, 2019. So there's a connection going on here. And, you know, it's the battlefield. That's what a, a lot of this information that I do is a part of. But keep on going. So um, I'm going to read this section that we got right here. Okay, I'm eating cherries. I got some blueberries. I got a pear. I got some pineapples. This is like a diet mukbang. I guess not diet. This is a, like a mukbang, but like the vegan version. I don't know. Cherries seem, seem like the lobster of veganism to me. I just feel I feel like I'm I'm all that when I eat cherries. Anyway, yeah, let's keep well, on going. Well, cherries cherries is the highest source of melanin in the fruit kingdom. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. Okay, let's continue on. Okay. Among the most important fold element in the witch idea were familiars, shape-shifting and flight. The small demons that became the witch's familiars of the later Middle Ages were originally dwarves, trolls, fairies, elves, kobo kobolds, or the fertility spirits called the green men, any of whom would be, could be either frightening or funny. And that's also to throw in another type, uh, which are called the brownies. So when you eat the brownie, that's where that word came from. The dwarves were spirits of darkness and the underworld and were often equated with ghosts or other malignant spirits. The elves were originally spirits of light and goodness. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings recently restored the high elves to their rightful place, but throughout the Middle Ages, they were usually confused with lesser and more mischievous spirits, such as the Scottish brownies, as I just mentioned. Robin Hood may have originally been a green man, and his hood, not a not an article uh, of clothing, but a bull's head or half or calf, basically is probably what it said. Kobolds brought, brought uh, good luck to houses and even helped with household chores so long as they were given food and drink. If refused, they might turn nasty. In these qualities, they resembled the bonnet malaries who demanded food and drink in return for their patronage of a household. Such spirits were equated by the church with minor demons, and though they could be made fun of and tricked on occasion, their, their powers were taken seriously. They were given amusing or diminutive names that were retained when they became witches' familiars, names like Heineken. Heineken, Harlequin, Green Demons, you see with it? The green bottle is used for the Heineken bottle. Okay, a, a liquor is a spirit. You must understand what's going on here. So when we say Robin Hood, there's three phases of Robin Hood. You have, and Robin Hood comes from Puck, and Puck is a version version of Pan, which broke it down. So there's three versions of Robin Hood. You have Robin Goodfellow. You have Robin Artisan, which is the son of Art, which is uh, the the basically the devil, okay? And what we have to understand is, is that the, the root elements of socialism is all the devil because socialism and how we communicate is basically a mathematical knowledge that we were not supposed to have. Mm. Um, and when born in the garden, you were, you were, were 
were made in the Garden of Eden. Let's just use this as the philosophy. We're not going to go in on the literal status because that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the psychological development, which came from, which originated with the caveman, unquote, quote unquote, caveman, cave woman, quote unquote, Adam and Eve. Okay. So when we look at caveman, cave woman, or Homo erectus, however literal you want to get with it, and the Adam Eve perspective, there's a there's a literal which would be freedom wild. And then you have Adam and Eve, which would be theological. Now, when you were constructed in the Garden of Eden, you weren't given any knowledge. So basically you were autistic Down syndrome. You didn't have any intelligence to develop. To eat from the tree of knowledge is, is what got you excommunicated out of the garden. Knowledge and our systems of communication is what has developed our mathematic systems, our tailoring, clothing, cameras, uh, telephones, airplanes, so on and so forth, have all been developed from knowledge, which was uh, gained and attained uh, after, you know, being uh, exposed from the garden, being expelled from the garden. So um, these that's what the son of art is. That's what art is. That's what communication is. That's what makes man and woman unified with each other is intoxications, euphoria, music, art, theater, going to a play, you know, things of these things is what we call courting or dating. This whole little area right there is extremely double. And guess what? You can't do anything about it. That's the realm you're in. That's what the fallen angels have brought us into this point that we're at right now. And that's what we're talking about when we're um, discussing these entities, which also represent smaller variations of fallen angels, which represent principalities that we operate by. So let me just turn uh, that right there. Go ahead. So she's in the woods. She's a wild woman. She's a woodsman, a woods mm -hmm. woman, or whatever. Um, she starts to be associated with men who wear green, like Robin Hood. Robin Hood did wear green, from what I can remember. Right. Uh, Heineken's in a green bottle, and it's a spirit. She's dealing with spirits in the woods. Um, you mentioned fairies, and I wasn't expecting you to take it there. Can we move forward with this one? Oh, the fairies. Okay. Well, and, and well, before the wild man, there was the green man as well. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Now, when it comes to the fairies, do um, you want me to read this real quick? Please and thank you. Okay, there we go. The Yale or Centicor is uh, a mythical beast found in European mythology and heraldry. Most descriptions make it an antelope or goat-like four-legged creature with large horns that it can swivel in any direction. Okay, the name might be derived from Hebrew, meaning ibex. The Yale was first written about by Pliny the Elder in Book 8 of his Natural History. The creature passed into medieval uh, bestiaries and heraldry, where it represents proud defense. Now, I'm glad we did this. Beautiful. You want to know why? Can we go over the name of this being again? The Yale. Yale University. It's called the Yale. Yale University. Its horns can swivel in any direction. So how many studies inside the University of Yale have swiveled in any direction? You know, and uh, in addition to that, when you say swivel in uh, 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 any direction, I think about 360, 360 degrees, 360 degrees of knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, institution of knowledge. But I, I, I'm with you. I'm just. No, you know, no, you're there. You're there. And also look at it like this. The word swivel is close to what? Swindle. Okay. Teach. Yeah. When we look at the rhyming mechanism and also when we look at the SWI. So the SWI can go in with swim, can go in with swine, can go in with a, a whole different duck. In other words, you know, SWI can be its own entity alone with inside the word. But regardless of that, what we're looking at is marketing and advertising. Okay. Like it said, this, this, entity, the, the uh, Yale was inducted inside of heraldry and it was inducted inside of the, uh, the bestiaries. Now, what they're talking about is what you see on Cadillac. What do you see on the Porsche? What is the Tommy Hilfiger symbol? They're all family crests. The Porsche is a horse. For a tourist, the tourist is a bull. You understand? This is marketing and advertising. This area, which has been mastered 1,500 years plus with European studies, okay, and it does stem from ancient Egypt, 
We go to ancient Egypt. We see the hieroglyphs on the wall. You see graffiti in the alley. You see the obelisk high in the sky. You drive down the highway and you see the billboard. So erase of everything that you thought you knew with yoga stat with yoga positions out of the hieroglyphs and just look at it as nothing but concert posters. Okay. On your walls and when you're walking down the streets of Chicago, New York. Okay. It's called right. advertising and marketing. This is where it lies at. It lies the roots of advertising and marketing are found in heraldry, bestiary, understanding the blazons, the directions, the definitions of the animals, and all of that. You have to go inside the family crest. Okay. Well, can I ahead. ask about these pictures at the bottom? I, I, I get it with the Yale, but what about these pictures at, at the bottom? What's going on with that? Okay, well, that's that's to uh that's to understand the metaphysics and principles of life. So, of course, me and you both know that those are nine times out of ten fake. But they are there in representation of what is uh, a human fantasy, an illusion, and we want to materialize it. So we materialize it to bring it closer to the point of life. You see? Now, what I just explained right there is ancient hermetic science when it comes to art. Okay? Me and you both know that trolls aren't real. But trolls are strong enough within the word of troll, I could pass it on to the next generation. Yeah, I was going to say, I question if trolls are, like, not real. Uh, there's a couple of them even watching us now. I'm just joking. Well, right. See, you see what you just did? You see that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I was a, I'm going to get no, like no, no, no. my down just off of that. You, you proved the point. You proved the point right there. Because the troll comes from ancient Ireland. How did it stem all the way up to 2021 to be inducted inside the internet realm as an entity? The, with that little creation right there in that picture assisted the life and and uh, sustenance of that word to still exist. Because when me and you were little kids, a troll was something that lived underneath the bridge. It wasn't somebody that we call, it, you know, we didn't use that as a derogatory term. You see, you see that? You see yeah, how, yeah. It, how it moves it's, but, and it's nothing but a word. So to keep the word alive, we do little things like this. Okay, so uh, shall I continue? Go Are ahead. You? All right. The employment, the benefits, the amusements of the fairy court resembled the aerial people themselves. Their government was always represented as uh, monarchical like a monarchy, a yeah. king, more frequently a queen of fairies was acknowledged. I remember watching cream, like, I'm not even big on a magic thing or the fairy thing, but I did watch like Winx or, what's it called, Winx or Winx or something like that? You ever seen that before? Winx, Winx? Oh, uh, no, I've never seen that. Uh, it, it's this cartoon. Um, uh, see, because you got sons, so you, you're not in there, but, uh, um, Winks or Wicks, it's like this little cartoon about fairies, and they got a queen of the fairies. I've never seen a king of the fairies, but you know, um, I've done a little bit of research, even like with Tinkerbell, she had her own uh, not movie, but like a series or whatever. And even Tinkerbell, they had a uh, uh, a queen of the fairies over there, never seen a king, never thought about it. But let me continue, please. And sometimes both held their court together. Their pay, their pageants or pageants, pagans? No, 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 they're, they're pageants, like you said, pageants, you know. Uh, and court entertainments comprehended all of the imagination could conceive of what was, by that age, accounted gallant and sp splendid. At their processions, they paraded more beautifully steeds than those of mere earthly parentage. The hawks and hounds with which they employed in their chase were the, were of the first race at the time daily banquets the, at the time daily banquets the board was set forth with a splendor which the proudest king of the earth dared not aspire to and the and the hall of their dancers echoed to the most exquisite music shall i continue uh, yeah let me let me interject we're showing you details and details once again is what a part of life so 
Well, and another thing is, is that the further we go back in time, it doesn't matter what civilization you deal with, you're dealing with far more details of entities, of, you know, in their mythology system or in their kindergarten area, which is the folklore. The folklore is the other world. This is where fairies are at. Fairies in our literal world would be cute, naive women, you know. That's what a fairy is considered as, as that's what they're represented as in the other world is naive and they're, uh, they're virgin. They are the symbol of virtuosity. They're the symbol of, of female clarity and purity. So that's why they flutter around, you know, in the trees and then they're gone. You'll never see a fairy and a witch in the same room, you know, and witches and fairies don't get along, you know. And that's the litigation of the other world. So the other world is basically the extension of high level euphoria, alcohol, tobacco, you know, so on and so forth. You know, we live in the other, we live in semi other world right now. Mm. Okay. One injury of a very serious nature was supposed to be the was supposed to be constantly practiced by the fairies against the human mortals, that of carrying off their children and breeding them as beings of their race. Unchristened infants, unchristened, uh, Chris, christened, when you christen a baby, that's it. Unchristened infants were chiefly right. exposed to this calamity, but adults were also liable to be abstracted from earthly commerce. Notwithstanding it was their natural sphere. With respect to this first, it may be easily conceived that the want to be of sacred ceremony or introduction into the Christian church rendered them the more obnoxious to the power of those creatures who, if not to be in all respects considered as friends, fiends, and nevertheless considered their consent round idle occupation, look little right to rank themselves among good spirits and were accounted by most divine as belonging to a very different class. I think I read that wrong. Can you help me out? Uh, um, you read it right. You read it right. Uh, I'll do a little bit of explanation on what's going on here. A lot of this folklore, which you'll find a ton of this other world folklore stuff inside of early America hoodoo. And the reason it being is because it merged in with the African-American slaves and it also merged in with the leftover Native American Indians, the Asians that were here with the uh, with the railroad thing, it all mixed in, okay? And one of its roots was definitely Irish and Scottish and Germanic um, folklore. Now, a lot of these folklore principles, as you just stated about um, babies not being christened and being attacked by the fairies to be drugged to the other world to be put into some type of cloning device and be made into <laughs> a, a fairy of their own. Uh, these were fear tactics that were put down to enforce individuals inside the realm of Christianity. And um, this also built uh, a negative principle in the mind, which allowed them to be you know, shoved into the basement or in the garage and locked up since their positive virtues weren't uh, explained over time as the root elements of these things came from European history. And it, like I stated, it got a melted in a melting pot with African thought, Caribbean thought, Asian thought, Native American thought merged into a hoodoo principle. It birthed the, the semi- other world that we live in right now. We all live in a highly intoxicated world. If I was to take sugar, alcohol, tobacco, and uh, give me another one, uh, cocaine out the picture. Whoa, 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 whoa. This whoa. world would be different in five seconds. You you put sugar and cocaine in the same category? Well, yeah. Well, well what, what I'm talking about is the, is the chemicals that were discovered in the Caribbean that built the world we're into today. Which is coffee, the coffee, yeah, alcohol, tobacco, sugar, cocaine. You take those five out of our existence, we're into a completely different dimension in five minutes. Because because these are all intoxicants. They they're drugs for uh, right. You know, and and I think it's very interesting now that we kind of get in that part of the conversation because for someone to classify or or, or to put sugar in the same sentence with Cocaine is like, uh, and then they put coffee in that same, uh, oh, wow. A lot of us are kind of 
strung out to a degree. <laughs> I, no, I mean, respectfully, no, 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 no disrespect. I'm just. Me, me. I'm telling you, your bread, alcohol, cheese. You understand? You take those things out of society. Whoop, we're out of We're in a completely different world, bro, within a day. You take that out of human consumption. You know, that is the unified other world that we all live in that is only one, two, three degrees away from fairies and trolls. That's why you see these individuals that get on the crystal math and are, are fiends. What are they doing? They're in the other world. They're Jeez. psychologically there dealing with the entities, giving the screams of hell. OK, when you when we li listen to a crystal meth uh, person screaming, there's an alcoholic on the bum. The alcohol is the is the vagabond. They're living in another world, you know, because these these drugs uh, will take you somewhere else. And uh, just to confirm what you're saying, I want to I want to let the family know cheese. Cheese is definitely a drug. A lot of people are addicted. I, I, I personally I know hardcore vegans, vegetarians, and they still trying to get off fees. That that mm -hmm. dad, well, we have to talk about. I, I mean, we got to talk about it one day, not today, but we're gonna talk about it one day. Let's, <laughs> let, let's move on for the sake of time. We got a lot to go over. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Would you like me to, or what should I do? Um, I love this one. I got a lot of explaining to do on these three words. So let's go to it. Fame. Uh, also, the word clitoris is another word for fame. So I'm going to be talking about that a little bit, too, within the combination. Fame. The word fame comes from fama, which means to talk, popular repute, common knowledge. In medieval times, this word was used as a term to signify a crime done in public. The word notorious commons from notorium is also a word signifying a criminal act done in public, but may be a different style and definitely on a grander scale and more widely known. In the Bible, you have the book of Acts. Everything is act and action. You are acting, okay? Why aren't you acting like you know? You see? Why don't you, how do you feel good? Are you acting right? You know, everything is act, brother. Subtract, you know? you find the word act in a lot of areas, you know? And what they're talking about is the, uh, to make one move, to make one respond. OK, and this is what fame is. You see, uh, my deprivation and my status of being poor uh, will make me act. And that action may be upon you as an assault in order to get whatever I need in order to survive. This will bring will make me infamous within my act if I have done it repetitively and have won. OK, go ahead. You know, I uh, just want to point this out. When I was younger, I didn't know it. So, you know, in honor of the spell, since we're talking about witchcraft, I wanted to point out the word infamous. It's a, mm -hmm. it, 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 The pronunciation is misleading, folks, because infamous is simply in famous. Oh, he's infamous. You know, um, notorious, infamous, you know, whatever the case is, in famous. Please continue. Yes, Kim Kardashian, she committed the act the act was the sex tape. The sex tape made her infamous. It gave her fame. That's what she is at now. Yes. Kim you Kardashian know. is famous for that sex tape, which makes her infamous. Infamous. Yeah, she, she, she committed the act. She committed the heinous act, and that was the sex tape. The perversion, the privacy, the privy. You see? Uh, <laughs> this is... Go ahead. Right now, just to be clear, <laughs> for everybody... We're talking about medieval witchcraft. We're not talking about modern witchcraft. However, I got to admit, one of the biggest covens of witches in America is the Kardashian family. I'm, my apologies. We got a lot to go through with this PowerPoint, folks. I got to be honest with you. We don't got time to be fooling around and you know, doing any extra research, but I do want to put this out that uh, out there, car dash every single man, Kardashian witches, every single man. You tell me, I don't know these men's names. Every mm -hmm. single man they get around, they destroy mm -hmm. black widows. How the Kardashians destroy their men. 
I'm not saying all witches are bad, cause I I got a thing for witches, folks. Witches, you know that that's that's my type. Like, what's your? I don't got no type. I do got a type. I like witches, but <laughs> bruh, 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 y'all better be careful. Some of these witches, uh, uh, brother, do you know what glamour means? Oh, we're going to go in on that word. Glamour is up in the mix, too. And glamour is specifically talking about the aura, just like the word fame. The word fame is uh, uh, linguistically attached to the word click. So the more clits you get, the more fame you get. You know, and that's also a part of the word glamour because glamour is shown up in your aura. Aura is a part of the prestige. You know, my our prestigious leader, our prestigious lawyer coming to the stage to get the award, you know, and now he's and famous standing by the podium at the podium and everybody is looking up to him. You see what I'm saying? That's what makes him prestigious. He's at a higher level than what you see than what the, uh, those in the audience are. So you have to understand that a lot of these words are basically signifying the power that stems from one person from the amount and the type of conquering that you have done on other people. And this conquering may not be anything physical, and uh, it can be, you know, just like a boxer, Mike Tyson. He has a very strong glamour on his aura because he has physically conquered many men in the public eye. You understand? Now, you can attain this fame and this glamour also in the in behind closed doors and you do that sexually. But that's only because um, there is a social... Uh, stigma that says it's hard to make a, a female sexually pleased. So for the man that can do it, it automatically attaches an aura to that male. And that's what they see out in public. And this is where you get fame and fame will lead into fortune. Fortune is actually Fortuna, which comes from a uh, goddess in Rome. I do believe it could, you know, I think it's Rome. Yeah, Fortuna is in Rome. And Fortuna, um, she is, is the symbol of Jupiter. So let's go in. Jupiter rules over Sagittarius. So let's go in. Fortune has her name from fortuitousness and is a sort of goddess who mocks human affairs in a haphazard and fortuitous manner. Wherefore, she is called blind since she runs here and there with no consideration for dessert and comes indifferently to good and bad. Okay? So she mocks human affairs. Okay? in a haphazardous and fortuitous manner. So that's what happens with a lot of people that get rich. They uh, shrug off human affairs that are complex of those from the lower classes in order, in order to block their mentality or their status of fortune from being interrupted with uh, those who are in need. So when it comes to... Uh, people of the poor always complaining about the rich, they're not complaining necessarily about the rich. What they're complaining about is the cloak that the rich are under called fortune. And fortune enforces the mentality to operate in said status in order to protect their fortune. Because there is a high possibility and probability that if I stick my hand in this toilet with you and your dumb ass shit, that you could grab my hand and potentially pull me in. And that, my friend, is a probability that businessmen aren't going to fuck with. <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> Go ahead. Real, real quick, because when I pulled up the uh, insinuations or conspiracy theories of the Kardashian family, women being witches, uh, uh, it was referred to as a misogynistic idea. And I just wanted to bring the receipts. I know it's already in the PowerPoint, but Glamour originally referred to, uh, was referred to as uh, magic, uh, a magic spell. Nonetheless, um, let's get back to the PowerPoint. You are on a roll. Uh, let's continue. My apologies. Uh, prestige. Prestige is properly understood as an illusion of the devil, which is not caused by any material change but exists in only in the perceptions of him who is deluded, either in his interior or exterior senses. So that's basically, like I said earlier, a fan looking up at the one on the podium is the element in between that fan and the individual at the podium is prestige. The glaring of the eyeballs, glamour, fame, fortune, and prestige only comes from mass 
the hysteria of a unified thought on one individual. Okay. Mm. Are you getting it? So we all have a unified thought that Martin Luther King did great things. Okay. So with that unified thought by a mass number, wah, he automatically gets slapped with a glow. Now, here's what's so powerful about this. Martin Luther King could be in Chicago and nobody in Chicago knows who the hell he is. But the entire state of Florida loves him, loves him through the YouTube, right? So he walks down the street of Chicago and people will look at him and say, who the fuck is that guy? But nobody in Chicago knows him. His worship is coming from Florida. You see, when you understand this level of the game, this is where all space and time gets erased, buddy. There, well, there is a, go ahead. That's that's what it was like from what I was told, obviously. But that's what it was like in uh, ancient Europe. Uh, a god would only be relevant in a certain city or, you know, a certain area. Um, you know, these certain people had, you know, in, in, in this area, they had this god in that area. So when you say that, it's on par with even what I was told through the school system, which wasn't much, but absolutely. But watch this. In volume three or in all the photography and all three volume series, you see the power, don't you? On all of those photos I've used, don't you? You can see and you can feel the power. And the reason it being is because the, the statues are old, the painting are old. People have worshipped them, worshiped them for hundreds and thousands of years. We didn't even know shit about it. You understand? And then when I put it in here, you automatically saw that grow of of human mass, okay? That's all it was, but keep on going. Yeah, you can read the evil eye? Sure. In 1352, seven persons were condemned for beseeching a goat to take them to the witch's assembly. Although they had not succeeded in obtaining their wish, they were sentenced to 12 years in prison. <laughs> At the same trial, eight others who had sold their souls to the devil had taken part in the magical ceremonies were sentenced to life imprisonment, to life imprisonment, while eight who had killed children with the evil eye or with incantations were sent to the stake. For Romanians, think that if you were, uh, for, for, for Romanians, think that if you stare at the baby, you spoil it with your eye. To counteract this, the child must be spat upon. In fact, you must never say that a baby is pretty or that anyone looks well without spitting on the ground. Wow. <laughs> what the freak is this? Uh, yo, yo. So what we're talking about here, when you see that word Romani, which is another word for gypsy. So, and when we say gypsy, we're saying ancient Egypt. When we're saying ancient Egypt, we're saying uh, female freedom. There was more female freedom inside the realm of ancient Egypt than Greece or Rome. Um, and the reason being is because of the high level pic pictorials that was around them and the, the levels of intelligence that, were, that they were dealing with, which were highly complex, which was complex enough to have a female uh, relaxed, okay? So, that's what we're looking at when we're saying the evil eye as well, because the majority of them aren't relaxed, okay? And this evil Ooh. eye is the anger point that is, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm what? sorry, I'm sorry. Brother, have you ever heard of rest, uh, wait, uh, R, Lord, see, these glasses don't even fit. It, the it evil eye, fit. brother, right there, you see that? That was cute. Um, but no, uh, RBF. Have you ever heard of RBF? Um, RDF or RBF? Um, be before I answer the question, I wanted no. to pull the audience. Does anybody know what R? BF stands for. Let me just look at the comments. I, I got to give the family just a second. I heard this. I, I didn't make this up myself. And I saw this girl who had a swimsuit on. That there was a play on this right here. Um, I just want to ask the family real quick. Um, I guess within the next 10 seconds, 10, 
six, two, one, nobody. Okay, but no, but no comments are coming through at all. So I'm sure only reason that's doing that is because there's a lag. I'm it's probably a hundred comments coming through the pipeline as we speak. But okay, so now that you know, for just for the sake of time, uh, because for the, those who are going to catch this later, there, uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, resting, resting B I T C H face. <laughs> What let is me, this, brother? What is this? <laughs> let me just uh Google it real quick. I just want to see. Um, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna hit Google. I'm gonna hit R B F. I just want to see what comes up. Oh, there it is. R B F meaning. <laughs> R B F. Could you read this for me, brother, please? Yeah. The resting bitch face, also known as RBF or bitchy resting face, is a facial expression that unintentionally appears as if a person is angry, annoyed, irritated, or contemptuous, particularly when the individual is relaxed, resting or not expressing any, any particular emotion. Now, let's talk about this for a second, because this is one of the root definitions of witchcraft. Now, when we, sp when we say evil eye... We're talking about Cyclops from uh, the Marvel comics and the X-Men as well. We're talking about the red eye of the goat and the devil and all of that. And we're also talking about the blank murderous stare that the female does to try to wrench your gut. Any gut wrenching or headache implication that comes from faces like this is the magic system that we call witchcraft. Uh, excuse me, brother. I just want to add value. Do you mind? Go ahead. I'm right. I'm with you. So I had a a, a, a Facebook uh, page. I had ten thousand followers and everything. It was pretty dope, and I maxed out at five thousand friends. Uh, and uh, how I and and that page got taken down. It's the only reason I bring that up because I'm still a little salty behind it. You know what? I'm in my feelings. I digress. So uh, on that page. I had typed in and I think it got like maybe a thousand likes or some crazy number like that. I, <laughs> I typed, I, I posted, <laughs> if a woman stares at you for more than six seconds, she either wants to have sex with you or she wants to kill you. Either way, it can go either way. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Nonetheless, I don't want to get too far off, but when you brought up the evil eye, I couldn't help but to reminisce um, and, and kind of tie it into current day. But we want to stick with the medieval. Um, let me just bring up one more point, but even though I'm stepping on my own toes. So right here, I have highlighted um, Romanian. And right. I, I had to kind of... Um, fact check that real quick just to make sure I wasn't crazy. So I hit back. If you if I if you see my, my back, it says Romanian. Yeah, um, it's spelled all, without the U. But yeah. Right. But but here it is. Romanian. With the U. And it says Romanians. Nonetheless, this is where I'm going. When I hit Romanian and I scroll down, you see right here it says uh Aromanian. Right. That's what the Kardashians are. Yeah, I mean, well, no, the uh, I think they're Armenian, Armenian. Armenian, they're Armenian Jews. Yeah, they're Armenian Jews. You know, yeah, they're Jews. Hold on, no, there's no, nah, there's some type of uh, from the Caucasus Mountains. Yeah, yeah, that's where Armenia is located. Okay, okay, I, okay, I digress. Yeah, I digress. yeah, they, okay. they click, click on their wiki, it'll show in the right corner, but go ahead. Well, well, you know, I was trying to go somewhere I shouldn't shouldn't have gone in the first place. I, I, please forgive me. Let's continue, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, what you want to read the description next to the ring, or you want to go to the next page? Found in Croatia, a remarkable 1,800-year-old ring with an eye that was used to protect the wearer from spells or a bad curse, often referred to as the evil eye. Okay. I wanted to go in on this area right here where uh, the child must be spat upon and giving the compliment. The compliment is a form of witchcraft because it makes you act in response. Anything that forces anybody to act 
or respond is in essence a form of witchcraft so in order to cast a feeling upon you of feeling good and then also putting you in an impressionable um response mode because you know when somebody gives you a compliment now you're open to receive anything else and this is what salesmen use brother you there hold on oh no Oh, come on. In the name of European Jesus, Bill Gates, what's going on, man? Oh, I'm not All right. Well, I'm going to go to the next slide. Let's just see what he has because he's on fire right now. Finally, we get into magic. While I wait for him to come back, um, I guess I kind of do want to go over what he was, what he was saying because it's talking like, if you compliment a child, you got to spit on a child. And if you compliment an adult, you got to spit on the ground. This is, this is, that's deep folks. But anyway, anyway, magic. Magic took many forms during the middle ages. It is best understood not as an inferior variety of science or religion, but as an independent world view. Ancient cultures knew no distinction between magic science or religion or indeed between these and philosophy poetry and art all were aimed at understanding and controlling the universe hence all things stars herbs stones metals planets and the elements and elements mesh with man his longing his lust his desires his fears and even his physical appearance and health. Uh, is the brother? Oh, he's all the way gone. Oh, come on. Uh, hey, Siri. Call Keenan Booker on speaker. Calling Keenan Booker on speaker. Oh, okay. Here he is. Oh, I'm back in. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, that was racism. I don't know what's going on. Oh, man, you said something like your computer got the vaccine. Your shit ain't right. I, I, I ain't no corona over here, brother. I don't even have my <laughs> cell phone linked into the computer, so I don't, I don't know what is going on, but I'm going to tell you this. Whenever we get heavy on these subjects and dealing with this witchcraft, boy, it, it collapses some things. That just lets you know what is so, why I love it. It's powerful. Like, bro, it is gigantic. But keep going. Keep going. Okay. Well, I actually read the slide, but since you're back, I I'll read it again. Is that okay? Or would you like to take a shot at it? Okay. okay um, I can just speed, speed read through it real quick. Please. You ready? Yeah. Okay, magic took many forms during the Middle Ages. It is best to understood is best understood not as an inferior variety of science or religion, but as an independent worldview. Ancient cultures knew no distinction between magic, science, or religion, or indeed between these and philosophy, poetry, and art. All were aimed at understanding and controlling the universe. Hence, all things, stars, herbs, stones, metals, planets, and the elements and elementals mesh with man, his longing, his lusts, his desires, his fears, and even his physical appearance and health. And that's one reason why I composed these three volumes the way I did, you know, is because I clearly understand that principle. But keep going. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what do we have here? Right there, you have. Uh, well, it says. Uh, table the magic. A is... Go ahead. Uh, it says table A experiments in CLM 849 something. Uh, purpose number one for gaining knowledge of the literal arch, two for causing a person to lose his senses, three for arousing a woman's love, four for gaining dignity and honor, for arousing hatred between friends, for obtaining a banquet, for obtaining a castle, boat, horse, and for res resuscitating a dead person for invisibility, for obtaining a woman's love. I thought, I thought number 12 was, 
Oh, arousing a woman's love was number three. All right. For constraining a man, woman, spirit, or beast. For obtaining a horse. I thought obtaining a horse we already did. Number five, number nine is for obtaining a horse. Anyway, yeah, what's going on here, brother? Oh, what's going on here is these people, this is what they were using magic for and also what they could have been charged for. You see, um, these things during those times, you know, the, some witches would turn a man into a cow and make her make the cow do all the all the herd work that was needed. I mean, all the farm work that was needed, um, you know, uh, milking, you know, they'll some witches knew how to do rituals where they could just take an ax and just put it into the wood and milk would come out the handle. You know, there's uh, <laughs> there's. Yeah. Now we have to ask ourselves that if this was literal activity in another dimension that they were in because of the way their minds were wired through trauma and chemicals and their their food consumption and also their hallucinant uh, consumption when it comes to alcoholism, ergot, uh, syphilis is known to make you have halluc hallucinations. So we don't know if these things were real or not. And there's enough detail to speculate that they were real. So, um, yeah, and there's enough cases. So, you know, you want me to read this? Please and thank you. This is, okay. All but a few of the experiments fall into the three main categories. There are 12 illusionist experiments designed to make things appear other than as they were to, to uh, concur forth a... I mean, to conjure forth an illusory banquet or castle to obtain a wondrous means of transportation, usually a demon in the form of a horse that will carry the magician across land or water or to make a dead person seem alive or vice versa. Seven psychological experiments are intended to have influence on people's intellects or wills to arouse love or hatred to gain favor at court, to constrain the will of others, or to drive a person mad. Fully 17 experiments are diminutory uh, techniques for gaining knowledge of the future, past, distant, or hidden things. Most of these experiments entail uh, uh, catoptromancy or scrying. Catoptromancy or scrying is magic mirrors, okay? The magician's assistant, usually a young boy, stares at a reflecting surface until he sees figures, taken here to be uh, apparitions of spirits who can reveal the desired information. As should become clear in following chapters, these three types of experiments are significantly different from one another. We find an element of playful fantasy in the illusionist experiments, an often violent effort um, at coercion in the psychological ones, and an, ins and an insistence on detecting truth and righting wrongs in most of the divinatory ones. So the, that, that was a list of divinitation, as I do believe, uh, no, I don't have a list of mancies up there, but there is a long list of all the different types of mancies inside no, you do, you do. Uh, the volume two as well. Huh? No, no, no. Uh, this PowerPoint has all the mancies, necromancy, uh, cardomancy, so on and so forth. <clears throat> oh, okay. So it's on another the slide. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're getting to it. So I have all the mancies listed, but that's also in the book. Yeah. And, um, what they're talking about here is basically what I was stating earlier, you know, and it also is very well described inside the volume two on how demons were called up and the demons basically could build a castle. They could build a castle with a live banquet operating inside the castle. There will be humans inside that banquet that are eating food and they will think that the food is real. Do you understand me? Okay. This is inside the material, but go ahead. Okay. Hold on for the listening audience. <laughs> For the listening audience, he said, D "Demons building a castle." Please, brother, I, I don't, I don't want you to say anything. Um, just let's see if the people. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Anybody the know the Solomon. story of Solomon's Temple? Uh -huh. Solomon Temples was built by demons. Are you kidding me? <laughs> And then you, I said, hold on. The brother said, building a castle. This is this is the whole Masonic story all over again. I I talked about Solomon's Temple in one of the best videos I've ever done. Uh, um, Lilith, good girl gone bad. 
in the in my Lilith breakdown, Solomon got a a a different aspect of Lilith, the demon. So now we know Solomon was was it Solomon that had many wives? Yeah. What if I told you that every demon that Solomon controlled was female? All aspects yeah, of Lilith. Uh, this yes, the ring. Realm. Solomon was Lord of the Rings. Solomon was Lord of the Rings. He used the ring to, 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 to make the Lilith demons build him that temple. William Carter's on fire. Uh, King well, and Booker, yeah. the Cat 720 is on fire. Yeah, this, this is what it is. The 72 devils of the Goetia are also the same uh, 72 jinns of Islam. Teach Muhammad! Jins. This is where it's all in combination. And you have to, um, in, in the volume two, it's very well described on what type of rituals to do in order to call these devils up, which they'll be underneath your lead to do whatever you request, basically. You know, yeah. um, the de the full details aren't there because we don't have all the, you know, 1500 books and we don't have the, the certain type of herbs that they have been utilizing, but um, it's definitely there now. I will tell you this, the African-American culture has has direct connection because of what I've written with all 70, 72 doubles. Um, brother, we just hit the hour mark and we not even a quarter. We on slide 11. We got 65 Yeah, the, the weather magic is... I'm sorry, bear with me just a second, just a second, because I don't know if we should continue on. Should we no, make this a series? Should we just, you know, never do this again? And I don't want to ask you because you're biased. I want to uh, pull the audience. If we should keep going right now, <laughs> you got to hit the like button. Let me go check to see how many likes this video got. If, if the video don't got like a decent number of likes, if the shit got like 25 likes, we're ending here right now. I'm not playing with y'all. I'm not playing with y'all. I got things to do. We're not gonna be this 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 PowerPoint is 65 slides long. And we on slide 11. I'm not gonna be up here all day. Y'all playing with me. Hold on, let me go check, see how many likes this video got. <laughs> this video got 25 likes, brother. I'm going home. I got I got ish to do, man. I'm not exactly. playing with YouTube. Go watch somebody else's video. I'm I'm sure somebody else going hard too. Somebody yeah, and this is the PowerPoint that's used for the uh for the DVD, the Witchcraft DVD. So it's fully this there. It's available on likes. Amazon. This video got mm -hmm. 16 likes. Bruh, you know what? If you want us to keep going, you got one minute to hit the like button. This video got 16 likes. If you want us to keep going, you got to hit the like button. If not, bruh, we can do part two. It's not even that serious. It's just YouTube. You ain't, look, Craig, it's Friday. You ain't got nothing to do. You ain't got no job. <laughs> it's only got 16 likes. I'm going home. Y'all playing with me. Listen. <laughs> oh, my God. How, how many likes it got? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, all right, all right. Okay, you know what? I'm not even going to trip. Queen Mother Matriarch, if Queen Mother Matriarch didn't say it, I wouldn't believe it. If Queen Mother Matriarch didn't say it, I was going to end the whole live. I'm not playing around. I'm not playing around. We'll be on this daggone internet all day. I got things to do. Shoot. Anyway, okay, so we got uh, more than 16 likes. I guess we can keep on going. I ain't even going to trip on it. I ain't even gonna trip on it. My apologies, brother. My apologies. Now, no, let me good. check. We, we, no, we gotta test the ground. We gotta Is see if the people is with us. You know. Okay. 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 So, what say ye? Should we continue? Yeah, we can continue. But I do like the idea to split this up into a, another series. So let's just give it a couple more slides, and then we can exit left. And the reason in being is because these subjects are detailed. And, you know, I wrote these books four or five years ago and the brother Crumb, just like the guy 720, we don't feel the seriousness coming from the people pertaining to this subject. Now, there's bias. There's, and that really that that proves the collective immaturity that we have when it comes to understanding what type of environment we're in. And it also comes to dealing with the reality of the plight 
and the position that we are in and what we do not know and what we fictionalize ourselves in the public light to know. It's embarrassing, you know, and I applaud Crumb for going down routes of uh, intellect that the Negro won't touch because it deals with our, everything in existence deals with uh, our situation. You're on one planet, okay? Everything on that one planet is your problem, your responsibility. You dig what I'm saying? But go ahead. Yeah, to all the master students, I now welcome y'all to art school. I'm gonna school y'all with this art so hard, I'll make smart cool. Let's get into it, brother. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. what do we got? Okay, here? in the in in the Capitoluria of Charlemagne, who died at Aachen in 28 January 814, the punishment of death is declared against those who, by evoking the demon, trouble the atmosphere and excite tempests, destroy the fruits of the earth and dry up the milk of the cows and torment their fellow creatures with diseases or many other misfortunes. All persons found guilty of employing such arts are were to be executed immediately upon conviction. Innocent eight, um, in his celebrated bull, that's Pope Innocent VIII, in his celebrated bull, summons Des Desi Dariantes Effectibus, and the 5th of December in 1484 charges sorcerers in detail with precisely the same foul practices. The most celebrated occasion when witches raised a storm was that which played so important a part in the trial of Dr. Fion and his coven in 1590, when the witches, in order to drown King James and Queen Anne on their voyage from Denmark, took a cat and christened it. And after they had bound and dismembered the corpse it, uh, to the animal, in the night following, the said cat was conveyed into the midst, in the middle of the sea by all these witches, saying in their riddles or sighs, uh, this done, then did arise such a tempest in the sea as a greater half not um, have seen. Okay. Now, what they're talking about here is when King James, who constructed the Bible, got attacked by some witches in the middle of the ocean and um he did survive the ordeal but you know his ship was broken down but go ahead i can't hear you i'm sorry are you talking about wrote the bible king james that king james yeah he also wrote demonology uh, 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 <laughs> the dude who wrote the bible or translated the bible also wrote a book called demonology and this guy Oh, here it is right here. Receipts. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. King James, one of England. Demonology. Damn, Gina. Can somebody type in damn? Can somebody give Keenan Booker a damn Gina? Can somebody okay. give this man a damn Gina? Now, demonology isn't used in this material. I didn't really have to because that information sits in the area of demonologists. And it also sits in the area because it's not... A, a exclusively Catholic, so it doesn't really sit into the area of the Inquisition, okay, when it comes to King James producing it. But queens did attack him. I mean, not queens, but witches did attack him. The definition to the word queen is prostitute, by the way, when we talk about the medieval times. But the witches did attack him, and they were discovered, and they were taken to the stake and burned, okay? And um, he detailed witches, but also... He was a homosexual. And uh, there is a lot of energy in the mixture of uh, female hatred being the drive towards the element of uh, what witchcraft was. Okay. Now, when we talk about these witches, the Tempest, this is giving, um, this is giving essence to the area that a female can create a Tempest by getting angry. And this tempest is stirring up the room, stirring up other people, stirring up a weather. Now, when we talk about the literal side of a lot of this magic, we have to understand that there's a high possibility because our mineral content and our atmosphere during those times was a lot more purer and stronger than what they are now. We have too much... Uh, we have too many synthetics in our body and we have too many synthetics in our earth. We have too many synthetics in the air. You know, for us to be able to produce some of what we're what we're what is documented here, but um, there was definitely a time period called the 
Tempest, who, you know, would create great hysteria, great problems, tornadoes, hail, uh, dry up the milk to the cows, you know, um, could bring in locusts, bring in cats, bring in rat plagues. The Tempest Star, here it is. So in medieval lore, the Tempest Star were magicians, specifically weather makers, dwelling amongst the common people who possessed the power to raise or prevent storms at will. For this reason, anyone reputed as a weather maker was the subject of respect, fear, and hatred in r rural areas. Whoa, One whoa, whoa. bishop of Agobard, what? I'm, so, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just got a download. I just got a download. I remember watching a cartoon called X Men. And Storm, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Well, well okay. Somebody called Storm a witch. I can't remember. I remember some when you said that. I had a flashback. I said, I remember somebody called Storm a witch. Storm from the X-Men, one of the bad guys. Storm was fighting. It was some good guy. We got to win the shit. We got to fix the world and, you know, whatever the case may be. And um, they had this little banter or the back and forth. Ah, justice. Ah, Spider-Man. You know, whatever, they, you know. The, the back and forth. And within the melee, somebody addresses Storm like, oh, I'm going to get you, witch. Or that, that witch, oh, or something. And I'm like, when as a kid, it's just whatever. But now that you're saying this, I'm like, hold on. You know, what's the chances? You see? My apologies. You see? No that, no, that was direct, what you just did. But what you also just did was you recognize that you were in the Western world, then you don't know the language that they're talking. Jeez. You see? And it just reverted to your head. You Now you know the language that they're talking because you know their culture. Okay? And guess where Marvel Comics came from? Their culture. Whoever the right. genies are that are designing those characters, they know the levels of life that are embedded inside of certain words to apply to a caricature and make the caricature alive. So that's what you just saw. So when you see Storm and somebody calling him a witch, that witch calling was a recognition towards the life entity that's stuffed inside the Storm, that's given Storm life, well, you and see? And they had to do that in the public light because it's best to do, you know, you hide things in plain sight, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. In addition to that, so, I had already acknowledged Storm as being one with nature. When we think about Wiccans and Wicca, you know, their church is 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 not a church, a synagogue, a temple, what have you. It's in the woods, in the forest, because you know, even as you started out, this PowerPoint was in, in the folk folklore section. You referred to um, you know women are uh, 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 the huntress, the woman in the forest. She's dealing mm -hmm. with nature. Mm -hmm. uh, the you know the the, uh, the uh, five point pentagram: earth, wind, fi uh, fire, water, and then the fifth element is spirit or ether. Nonetheless, so now I thought about storm as uh, being one with nature, but it fits in with what you're saying now. My apologies, I cut your wisdom. Do you mind starting over? No, no, you're good. You, do you want me to read it from the top or to read from where I was at? Uh, from the top. Okay. In medieval lore, Tempestari were magicians, specifically weather makers, dwelling amongst the common people who possessed the power to raise or present or prevent storms at will. For this reason, anyone who reputed, I mean, anyone reputed as a weather maker was the subject of respect, fear, and hatred in rural areas. And they were all they would also uh, extort the farmers because by using weather on their farm and they would make them give them, you know, finances of their farm or extra food in order for them not to do it. So one Bishop Agobard of Lyons writing in 815 on the subject of the irreligious beliefs of his flock complained that villagers represented, I mean, resented paying tithes to the, to the church, but freely paid a form of insurance against storms to the village Tempestari. But it was also noted whenever a supposed weather maker failed to prevent a storm, he or she would generally suffer the wrath of the populace, being victimized or killed. Hold on. So instead of paying tithes to the church, 
which they didn't want to do. They resented that. They freely paid a, a form of insurance against storms to the village weather lady. Tempestari. Yeah. Tempestari. So she wouldn't, uh, you know, she, her, uh, her duty was to make sure the farms grew and make sure storms didn't cut. So if this, if their fields collapsed, then they would blame it on the witch, and we're gonna have a burning today. <laughs> oh my God! You know, um, I remember. Yeah, you know. <laughs> go ahead. I, I remember. Someone saying, um, this old lady, she's, you know, rocking in her chair. She's really old. She had this stockings that only came up to her calf, the granny panties. She's very, the cliche granny. And uh, she said, oh, a storm is coming. H how you know, grandma? Uh, and, and, and before I give the answer, I wanted to uh, poll the audience. Um, does anybody know how grandma knew a storm was coming? Uh, uh, Brother Keenan, please don't say the answer. Uh, does anybody know how grandma knew a storm was coming? How did she know that? Anybody know how she know? Does anybody know? I mean, I, I, I don't know. A lot of y'all was raised around your grandma. How did she felt it in her bones? <laughs> I said, grandma. How you know, how you know uh, a storm coming? Oh, baby, my knees hurt. My bones aching. Oh, my bones, my tired aching bones. How storm is coming, oh Lord. Some of y'all, some of y'all grandmas is 35 in the club. <laughs> oh my God, grandma says she feel it in her bones. Uh, mm -hmm. My apologies. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this was, uh, I'm not sure which part. They, so where are we at here? Uh, brother, I think your internet is tweaking. Wait, are you back? I guess what I'll now? this. It's in yeah. Um, well, I'm just going to read this until you come back. When you come back, just chime in. You back? I'm right here, bro. Okay, okay, okay. I'm right here. All right. So, okay, cool. I'm frozen up read? or something? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we can yeah, read. Yeah, was... And uh, these right here are different cases of tempestaries that uh, happened in the past. What we're really talking about here, when we're talking about female power of connection with nature and um, the weather, we're talking about the uterus is alien thing. Basically, the whole witchcraft department is trying to divide and compartmentalize all the different areas of power that stems from the uh, uterus's strength, you know, and that's basically what they're doing. They're trying to define it and they define it by compartmentalizing all these different types of witches and other different areas of beauty and other different goddesses throughout time. That's what they're doing. They're trying to trap the different power elements, which change. They change, you know. So it's a hard follow up, you know. Indeed, indeed. That's Shall what we we're really talking about throughout the whole witchcraft. All right. So uh flight magic. Flight magic is uh uh it's basically quantum physics. And it's quantum physics that's coming from baby blood. Dancing around in baby blood, dancing around in Jewish feces, dancing around in scorpion blood and all different other types of arcane ingredients mixed into a uh, it's it mixed into a pot. It's the same thing as invisible magic. Basically, there could be a couple of different variations, but it's based on um, the arcane ingredients, which allow that. And it's obvious these people, well, Europeans are infatuated with flight because they brought us planes as I stated in the book. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll read this if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead, you can read. She is summoned before the court and to begin with, she is asked, question, what is her mode of life? Answer, 
Well, being alone, she feels afraid and does not know why. Question, whether the devil had not attacked her against, again last night? Answer, no. How often during each, well, I'm sorry, what is this, brother? Yeah, these are uh, court transcripts from a from the witch trial investigation of of uh, Eckstadt, that you see right there, Einstadt. Oh, this okay. is real. So, okay. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. I this this thing is messing up on my. Uh, I can barely hear you. You sounding real wild right now. It sounded real electrical. So let me see if I can fix something. Uh, can I get a mic check? If you can hear me, fine. Press one. If if I'm tweaking, press two. If I'm if I'm tweaking, press two. No, you're clear now. I can hear you clear now. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, you're I, good. I can hear you now. I was marveling at the fact that this is actually a transcript from a official trial of a witch. Um, yeah, this is this is incredible. Um, should we? You see that? You no, let me stop right there real quick, bro. Okay. Because when we're talking about the undead, when we're talking about the werewolves, when we're talking about witches, guess what? They had DA. They had medical. They had surgeons involved. They had lawyers drafting over evidence. They, they, uh, they got transcripts of everything she said during interrogation transcripts of the entire trial as detailed as they are today they were in the 1400s wow before the slave trade so when i'm talking about the undead that's why you haven't seen anybody come over here clowning with those type of subjects because they're very thorough i've read the thoroughness of them and uh, just like when you pulled up the Beast of Gavadon the other day, you could feel the energy off of that story. There was mass confusion and there's real human lives behind these situations. So we don't thoroughly know. And it is not a laughing matter. Your laughing matter proves your Im immaturity. Your immaturity proves your childishness and your childishness allows your victimization. So do not play with uh because these are all deep psychological realms since we can't thoroughly identify them in the literal essence of today because it's 500 years later you see what i'm showing yeah. you so yeah yeah it, it's serious bro i mean we th thought it was all a movie or something you know to go eat some popcorn at bro they got court trials of several werewolf court trials several witch court i can show you the What's familiar is that they're located there's two thousand miles apart from these locations and uh, the cities that they stay in or the sacrificing to the devil are all the same. You were uh sounding like computer love for a good minute. You, you were on fire. I know you were saying oh, something. Oh yeah, that dope. was happening to me. Well what what part what was the last part you heard in clarity? Um mm. I can't even remember now. My apologies. But um, no, yeah. the next slide was love, love magic. Uh, should we continue? Uh, well, here actually. You want me to read? Can you can you hear me clear? Well, yeah. Oh, it, yeah. If you can, please. Okay. Magical spark love or aroused revulsion in the course of the series. Yeah, don't worry. You know what? You know, you're you're fine. You know, I would take that as a sign. Signs and symbols are for the conscious mind. I think this is probably a good place to end it. I would love to continue on, but I think the signal is um sketchy uh with that said brother uh some people have been asking i wanted to make sure that we put this out there before we part ways uh where can people find uh this book because right now we are reading 
out, you know, a PowerPoint based on your book, Kicked Out of Heaven, The Untold History of the White Races, circa 700, 1700 AD, volume two. Of course, there's a one and a three uh, written by Keenan Booker, the guy we have on the line right now. Uh, he goes by uh, the God 720. Uh, brother, K uh, can you speak? It looks like he's still tweaking. Um, you can find his book at www. Nobody says www anymore. Anyway, you can find it at kickedoutofheaven.com. It's really simple, family. If you want, if you like the book Kicked Out of Heaven, you can find it on kickedoutofheaven.com. Uh, with that said, um, I am your humble brother, Crumb. I want to ask, well, I, I want to thank everybody for hitting that like button. I want to remind everybody as well um, that. This video uh, is brought to you. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button. Share screen. This video is brought to you by Arthur Latanya Page Balcom. Her website, let me just hit this button as well. Her website is maat42plusgod.com. That is maat42 plus god.com. If you like this video, if you appreciate the information, uh, if you like the energy, uh, if you like the, you know, the the maturity or whatever the case may be, then uh, support the people that are bringing it to us. That's Arthur L.P. Balcom, Maat42 plus God.com. She is an author, as you may consume. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's other good stuff up there as well. Uh, last but not least, um, uh, if you uh, have not done so as of yet, smash that subscribe button. Now, this is the thing, family. I got to be honest with you. I'm not asking nobody for nothing. If you learn something, you owe me. Stop playing. If, if, if I said something you ain't never heard in your life or, you know, the good brother, you better, man, I'm not playing with y'all. I'm not asking nobody for nothing. It's either you hit the subscribe button or you remain a weirdo who just watch from the from the back. I see you watching. I know you there, but you just in the back like this. <laughs> it's all good, family. If you don't, I still love you and I appreciate your weird ass. Uh, you can also smash that like button, family. If you don't want to hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. You already know what it is, family. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know about witchcraft, how you feel about it. Uh, share this where applicable. Do you know a witch? Do you know a wizard? Do you know a whiz kid? Let them have it, family. Drop this link. Uh, with that said, um, this video is called Medieval Witchcraft. I am your humble brother, Crumb, the cult leader. And this has been another installation of Crumb TV. Peace. Hey, you are now watching Crumb TV. Crumb TV. Hey, we in Chicago, y'all, and y'all watching Crumb TV. It's your brother, Tim Buck, too. I say. You are now watching Crumb TV. You in Shot Town Fine, Jim Inglewood. Always up to no good. Man, I'm telling my brother Crumb. You're watching Crumb TV. I'm your only brother. You are watching Crumb TV. Reporting live from the Wild Hunter, South Side, Chicago. And you now watching Crumb TV. And you're watching Crumb TV. Crumb TV, baby. Hey. Crumb.